I, 32 male, found out at Thanksgiving my wife, 31 female, has been having an affair with a co-worker for several months. Establishing the scene, during COVID, my wife and I had a lengthy rough patch. Distance, emotional distance, and a deserted bedroom, you name it. I work in information technology at a hospital, and it was my time to cover on call for the holidays. As we approach my uncle's home for the holidays, a phone call comes in, so I take it as the rest of the family walks inside. As a hotspot, I was using my laptop and my wife's phone. I use an Android phone and haven't used an iPhone since the home button was gone. She receives a Snapchat notice. I spike to erase it, but it instead opens it. I received a message with a kissy face emoji from the account mirrored. I had no idea that accessing that message would lead to multiple saved messages from a coworker dating back to the beginning of this year. I don't use Snapchat, however it seems that if you don't save a message, it disappears over time. As a result, the chats are choppy, but they do contain some inappropriate messages that are effectively 20 questions the version. I glance through, my stomach drops, I finish my job, and attempt to walk in quietly to tell her we have to go. I've been calling for work. My wife, who had known me for around six years, realized it was something more. I went to the vehicle, four-year kid in the back, and attempted, unsuccessfully, to stay calm till I got home. I check through the mails with her more carefully and see her giving out his address. It's not a date if you have me observe the six-foot guideline, someone said. He won't be home and so on. He came over, she felt terrible, they made uncomfortable small chat, and she begged him to go. This occurs in April, after almost four months of who knows how much messaging, since the majority of it was not preserved. After then, the communications become considerably less frequent, barely a few each month until August, when they cease, I snarl. Nerd, I say. Inquire with him about what has been going on with my wife over the previous several months. He claims that nothing occurred. She claims that nothing occurred. All I have are many months of flirtation, a photo she sent of herself in a bra, and the upcoming country date at our property. So here I am. Disgusting, unworthy, second best, deceived, and, most importantly, foolish. She's lied in the past going to bars and claiming that she had to work late. Inappropriate messages that she didn't respond to but also didn't block. She disguised partners who were close friends from me. I knew our marriage was in trouble. I'll acknowledge that I played a role in it. I stopped being romantic, and I reduced our chats to a minimum. We were swaying. I don't blame her for desiring to stray. But, for the past several months, we've been going to therapy, and I thought things were going well. I've been trying again, and she has as well despite both of them insisting. Otherwise, I can't escape the notion that something physical is going on. What I'd be to believe that, right, I've seen the worst of myself in the previous 24 hours. She stated it was 60% emotional connection and 40% physical appeal since I let myself go, I'm 5'7", 150 pounds, and a realistic 6 10. This man is in good form taller than me and just 25 years old. She's clearly upset has generally taken my vocal scoldings in stride, and wants to try to make things work. Here's where you can help, Reddit. How will I ever be able to trust her again? How do I split up our family and miss at least half of my daughter's childhood for the next 14 years? I'm afraid of who she'll surround herself with. I don't want to lose my kid or be concerned about her well-being. How can I get over the fact that I don't know what happened? The romance ended four months ago, and it was all her fault. But I'm not sure whether I'll ever be able to forgive her much alone regain any kind of self-esteem or respect. If only for a little while, I was second best. Update 1. First and foremost, thank you for the overwhelming reaction from the community and the many direct comments and advice I've gotten. It's gotten me through the hardest 48 hours of my life. So, I've been sitting with my wife since yesterday, going through the specifics of the whole affair, the reasons she cheated, and where we go from here. Following this lengthy discussion, I contacted the affair personally. I was aware that this was a high-risk gamble, but I was familiar with him and his nature. He was sorry, provided me the information I needed, and it matched the tiniest details my wife had told me. What might have been fuel for the fire turned out to be a little respite. I understand that most people will label me foolish, but I don't believe they had a physical relationship. She found attention and confidence that she didn't seem to be receiving from me. This relief, however, was short-lived due to the subsequent talk with my wife. We spoke for many hours about her personal troubles that led to her straying, 
and I ultimately persuaded her that the only way out of this is to be honest. So, like most cheats, she revealed that this wasn't her first affair. She experienced the same experience with another coworker two months previous to her relationship with Nerd. Except that instead of being a nice guy, geek or sweetie, this man was the alpha grab what he wants, balls exploding with confidence kind. The tone of his text was far more explicit. Basically, he's outlining all of the things he wants to do to her in great detail. She responded, but said the only result was a drunken kiss in the parking lot. Yeah, I know. Here's where I'm looking for extra help. For the first time in our marriage, she told me a difficult reality that I had not discovered on my own. She has stated a desire to undergo counseling, polygraph testing, and admit her own wrongdoing, and she despises herself. Yes, I know it's all. The usual nonsense a cheater spews, but I too am afflicted. I want to assist her as my daughter's mother, whether I remain or depart. It's really difficult for me to abandon her when she's at her lowest point and wants to change. How can I get rid of the what if? What if she eventually turned out to be the person I fell in love with and always imagined she was? Address the issues that wrecked us and brought us here. Of course, she may just be telling me what I want to hear and then return to cheating. Is it really so difficult for individuals to adapt and develop as a result of such heinous behavior? Update 2. Around Thanksgiving, I discovered that my SDBXW had two primarily emotional relationships over a period of many months without going into too much detail about my personal situation. I'm wrestling with a moral quandary and would appreciate some opinion. My STBXW's closest friend, let's call her B, just married her boyfriend of around 7-8 years. B has always been kind to of Ma, STBXW and even to me, but she suffers from the same sickness as me. They took a break around 3-4 years ago for one or two days. During that period, she had an affair with a high school crush, and then resume dating as if nothing had occurred. I know she explains it since they weren't legally together, based on her chats with my STBXW. I try not to become involved in other people's affairs. I always felt she was a for what she did, but now I feel obligated to inform her husband. I wish someone had informed me. My STBXW's whole office was aware of her affair. They knew what my wife was doing since they observed me pick up my kid there every day. It sickens me that no one informed me for over a year. I can't say I blame them. I'm in the same moral quandary. Is it my job to sabotage a marriage? Is she justified in taking a vacation for a day or two? Or am I going to sit and watch this guy live a lie? He's not a close buddy, but he's a nice person. And we had dinner with them on several occasions. It doesn't seem to be correct. But neither does he damage his ignorance his bliss existence. Final update. It's been a long month what with the holidays and our six-year anniversary. I'd had many more terrible days than good, but enough time had gone that I could see progress in at least some areas. As if my D-Day being Thanksgiving wasn't enough to mar the holidays, my wife confessed to a third affair on New Year's Eve. This time, though, she acknowledged to having with this one, something she still denies of the other two. So after a month of ugly pictures, self-esteem problems, and the weight of reconstructing a life with no plan B, I'm back at square one, with my worst fears verified. The title of this essay was inspired by a comment shared to me by another Redditor soon after D-Day. I ignored its advice and now I'm paying the entire price. Yes, I tried to concentrate on my personal development throughout the previous month, but I couldn't. I moved out, but I still spent several evenings a week with her, establishing expectations and limits for this separation. She was going to counseling to figure out why she made these choices and I was going to recuperate from the event's impact. I determined that if there was any chance for our marriage, it would be when we both become better individuals on the other side. She eventually addressed many of her problems in treatment and had the courage to tell me the truth. The trouble was that I wasn't prepared to hear it. I pleaded to be allowed to hear it. For weeks, I probed and lived with the trickle truths, but I wasn't ready. I'm shattered. Images of things that used to kill me now appear unimportant. All of my progress was lost in a matter of seconds. What's amusing? When she informed me, she burst into tears, and I consoled her for hours. I didn't cry a single tear until today, when I fully lost it. I messed up. It was then that I realized how little I had been focused on myself the whole time and how much of my own development I had sacrificed in order to be here for her. I reinvested emotionally in her. I didn't say anything, but I was hoping for a happy ending in which I forgave her she changed, and we made it work. I'm not sure I have the strength for it anymore.
however, I am proud of her. I'm proud of her growth and the fact that she accomplished something for the first time in the six years I've known her. She was honest with a painful reality. It's not something I hear often in our group, but about half of the anguish I feel is the result of her hurting her own life. Of sure, the resentment exists, but I adore her. This did not cease. Her mother is no longer alive, and her father just relocated out of state. Her sole close friend is my cousin, and her only sibling died when she was 11 years old. My family accepted her with open arms and is heartbroken by her decisions. I was astounded that my calm, tiny, timid wife could do such horrors. As surprised as I was. But she's our child's mother, and I need her to be okay. So I've asked my family to offer her a place to stay in their spare bedroom, which they've had for the previous several weeks, while she looks for a new place to live. I know I owe her nothing, yet the rage and resentment have mostly subsided in the previous several weeks. I know I owe it to myself to be happy, but I can't let myself go. Her regret is genuine. Her self-hatred is genuine. How can you stand by and watch someone you care about trash their own life? But here is where I need your help. How do I get the courage to develop on my own? I'm doing all the necessary measures, but I'm finding no consolation in things that used to bring me delight. I can't play a video game for more than 10 minutes at a time. I push myself to go to social engagements, only to find myself overwhelmed and bored with petty chat that I used to like. I can't concentrate on movies because my mind wanders to horrible pictures. I work out a couple times a week, but despise it. I can't even anymore. I fought so hard to acquire those few inches after D-Day, and now I'm back where I began. With more agonizing pictures than ever before, as well as a month's worth of mental weariness. Worst of all, I'm slowly coming to terms with the fact that I'm not going to be able to reclaim my happy little family. That glimmer of optimism for reconciliation is fading. That surviving this requires concentrating all of my remaining power on myself. I was there for her, but she was also a source of entertainment for me. She served as a punching bag for the rage, a sympathetic ear for the. She bolstered my anxieties and low self-esteem. Looking her in the eyes now hurts more than the assistance she offers. For the first time in my life, I actually feel alone.